This planet is threatened with destruction, and we who live in it with death. The heavens reek, the waters below are foul, children die in infancy, and we and the world, which is our home, live on the brink of nuclear annihilation. We are in a crisis of survival. This is a CBS News special, Earth Day, a question of survival, with CBS News correspondent Walter Cronkite. Good evening. A unique day in American history is ending, a day set aside for a nationwide outpouring of mankind seeking its own survival, Earth Day, a day dedicated to enlisting all the citizens of a bountiful country in the common cause of saving life from the deadly byproducts of that bounty the fouled skies, the filthy waters, the littered earth. As a demonstration, its success was mixed, beyond expectations here, far below there. No one now can know exactly how many took part. We do have an idea how many planned participation, student groups in 2,000 colleges and 10,000 lower schools, citizen groups in 2,000 communities. By one measurement, Earth Day failed. It did not unite. It did attract that broad cross-section of America its sponsors wanted, not quite. Its demonstrators were predominantly young, predominantly white, predominantly anti-Nixon. Often its protests appeared frivolous, its protesters curiously carefree. Yet the gravity of the message of Earth Day still came through. Act or die. We begin our report with Bruce Morton in Denver. Place for Purple Mountain's majesty. A place where on a clear day, the legend says you could see forever. The clear days are fewer now, and instead of forever, the view often stops with haze. Next to Los Angeles, Denver has the best climate in the country for producing smog. In this unlikely seeming place, the air is threatened. Earth Day is a focus for efforts to save it. Bicycles at the state capitol were a Denver symbol. Auto pollution is a major problem here in the country's 17th most polluted city, so high schoolers pedal to show there's another way to travel. The altitude increases car engines' pollution output. It doesn't do a thing to bikes. Somebody in the cheerful, disorganized crowd said, let's clean up, and the several hundred young people did, scouring the Capitol grounds for litter. Cleanups like this went on in many parts of Denver today. Somebody got a wastebasket from the Capitol and said it must be the only one, but there were enough paper bags to go around. Then they left for the teach-in, bikers on bikes, but hundreds of others traveling on foot. Some sang, some shouted, all seemed to enjoy the day. High schools were not closed, but many announced absences would be excused. Currigan Plaza, the hall, was arranged to seat 6,000, though some planners predicted a half full house. In fact, it was better than that. Lots of coming and going, but about 5,000 seats filled. Most were young, but not all. Most were white, but not all. A group who'd bicycled across the state gave Governor John Love a declaration supporting a cleaner planet, and the governor signed it. 